Hello, everyone, to yet another episode of the Code and Coffee Show. During this show, we are talking about the two most important things in life of every developer. So it's about code and, of course, about coffee that flows in our veins. And today will be a really great episode because I know that Mark is also a, a huge coffee fanatic, so this coffee talk will be really great. But... Uh, today, in general, we will talk about DevRel. Everyone is talking about DevRel, but um, I have a feeling that uh, there are many companies that even have huge DevRel teams doesn't fully understand what DevRels are doing. And that's why we are having Mark, who is a real specialist in this term, because Mark is a DevRel lead at We Are Developers, uh, Developers, where he is the link between the company and the developers. He ensures that all engagements and events with the community are well thought out. He is also a full stack web developer, enthusiastic about Vue, Nux, Node, and all kinds of technologies. And I think Astro too, right? Yes, exactly. Recently. Recently. And of course, uh, we also have to mention that uh, you are almost a, a fully qualified pilot, right? Uh, not yet. I'm in my training. I'm almost, I'm almost finished with my uh, uh, theoretical training. So in two weeks, I have my theoretical exam, the final one, because there were several ones. Uh, the last one I did is to be accepted even in, uh, to be endorsed for the theoretical exam, the real one. And now is that's it. But then I'm still missing a lot of practice, but that will eventually come. It's like learning how to drive a car. You just need to practice enough to get it right. <laughs> yeah, I really can't wait the first conference on which you were you, you will fly on your own. Yeah, I me too, me which, too. <laughs> I really wonder which one with, will it be. Yeah, let's start talking a bit about coffee. What is your yes. favorite type? So my favorite type is I'm between um, a pour over with the origami or the good old um, AeroPress. Like both, I really enjoy. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I always love the design of the origami. It's so oh, yes. beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so yeah. simple. And um, I was even thinking about buying myself one, but uh, it was like uh, I'm kind of missing the space. But yeah, they are so beautiful. And uh, you are more of the uh, fruity type uh, person or this chocolate nutty? I'm more into chocolate nutty type. And I, I, I would say my favorite thing about the coffee is probably not even drinking it. It's preparing it. It's like... My morning ritual, like preparing the, this is when I do the, the pour over, right? Because it's all a ritual. You take out the things, you, you grind your coffee, you pour it like you, I do this, um, how is it called? This um, Kubomi divot, where it's like a spiral. So just to sort of oh, optimize yeah. the, the, the water flow. Some say it doesn't bring anything. Some, thing, some people say, yes, it does. Uh, for me, it's more for, of the feeling of the the peace you get with just doing that. It's like nice and beautiful, and then you do the pour over, you wait, you do the pour over, you wait, and it's, it's, it's like my favorite part of of the coffee. When I when I do an uh, a uh, an error press, however, I it's really it brings out more the um, the taste, really the taste of the coffee, how it's meant. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can you can feel it more. Uh, like precise i do the the recipe of james hoffman you you know james hoffman of course I uh, yes, the, yes. the coffee guru the youtube coffee <laughs> god so to say uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you about the ritual part because it is it is amazing this is also something that i do because i always uh, go for my first coffee about uh, about uh, 11 12 something like this and this is like this half an hour for me so i can prepare everything grind the coffee and as you said the ritual of uh, of, of the pour over yeah it's 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 something really really magical so 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 i fully fully agree with you and uh, i see you have uh, coffee with you what is it <laughs> well this is some uh this is now an aeropress because it's also faster to make than the pour over and it's from a company called um, Fjord from Germany. 
in, I, or, I ordered, I Ireland. always order, actually, I, I almost never order the same coffees. I order in different coffee roasteries throughout Europe. So this is one mm -hmm. that said um, cinnamon apple Christmas cake, something like that. So it's um, like very balanced, very smooth uh, thing. And with the AeroPress, it's like the AeroPress ne never fails. By yeah. the way, the AeroPress, um, what I love about that one, I mean, it's like how old? Like 2006, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, you can do so many things with it. You can do everything with it. You can do an espresso. You can do a uh, French press. You can do all sorts of different things. You can and do so tea you, in it. You can do you can do tea in it. So it's so versatile. That's why I I love it. And I have like this espresso machine. Like it costs thirteen hundred euros and stuff. I almost never do coffee in it. I I use my error press, the piece of plastic that's like worth twenty euros. <laughs> Yeah, and I also love AeroPress for it touristic, uh, for for the touristic reasons. I can always pack it in my bag and just uh, yeah, yeah, travel right, whatever yeah. I like. Yeah, because uh, when I go to some conference, conference, I can be sure that uh, the coffee there will be horrible. So I have to be prepared. Yeah, and have something on my usually own. Usually so. it is horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, of, sometimes yeah. it's not, but it usually is. Yeah, but as as you said, it's either horrible or, ju or just not horrible. But uh, still, it's... it's never great. Like actually, on my way back from uh, Poland, when was that? Saturday, I made this layover in uh, Austria in Vienna, and there in some airport shop, in some airport restaurant, I had like the most balanced coffee ever. I was so surprised. I was like, yeah, this is going to be like a half-assed coffee. Good enough to not throw away, but it was so so good. So I always try to get a coffee in public because you never know when you get surprised. Oh yeah, and especially that as, as you mentioned, the airport coffees are also yeah. uh, there are uh, there are quite similar category than the conference one in most yeah, cases. Yeah, yeah. But as you said, maybe maybe maybe. And this I'm was in, in a paper cup, so paper cup is usually shit by default, right? <laughs> she tastes by exactly. default but no this i was so surprised i forgot to wrote that to write down the name but i think the vienna airport is not that big that they have so many restaurants so when i do a label over again i will go and see if it's if it's again the same because it depends on so many things right the barista the grind size the humidity the temperature whatever so who knows maybe this was just a lucky shot or they really have a barista that knows what they are doing very, very interesting. Yeah, so maybe next time when I will also be in Vienna, I will give it a try. Maybe I will also find this uh, this lucky uh, coffee place. Um, so yeah, um, before we will jump into the main topic, so DevRel, um, running show like this won't pay for itself. Luckily, I have a great sponsor and it's Kinsta. So the next uh, 20 seconds are, are on them. Kinsta's application hosting simplifies the work of modern web developers. With just a few steps to get your app up and running with performance backed by the fastest Google C2 machines, Kinsta has built a development platform designed to get your applications in front of users as quick as possible. Test Kinsta's application hosting for yourself at kinsta.com. The first $20 are on us. And we are back. Thank you, Kinsta. Um, so yeah, let's start with the most general question. But uh, this is the thing that I expect that most companies should learn. Mm -hmm. What is DevRel? I mean, we know that it's for developer relations. But what does it mean? Yes. So this is like probably the most loaded question we will talk about today. <laughs> Because I think DevRel means something else for every company. So this is where the issues start. But I will tell you what I think it is and what it should be. So as you said correctly, developer relations. So everything that goes from the company to a developer, so some sort of messaging, it should go through a DevRel, which means they can wrap the message in a way that not that the developer understands per se, because like, I mean, they're not stupid. It's not that they don't understand like regular marketing, but it's, 
uh, <laughs> you're laughing. Uh, developers are sort of allergic to a certain type of messaging. And it's very interesting that it's almost only developers that are like sort of very repelled by this like very markety pitchy stuff and it's a, a very interesting situation to observe because you go to some other conference of whatever other like marketing stuff you have and there people do this sort of stuff all the time and when you just come a little bit close to a developer with that they run as fast as they can right so here the job of the developer relations is to wrap the message in a way that it's uh, it's comfortable for the developers that they don't say like okay yeah this is this is bullshit right it's also important to know that it's not like just marketing for developers which in some way is but it's it's more than that like because you're supposed to relate with the developer you're supposed to really understand what is what they want uh, what is what is interesting for them so. Like I told you, it's one getting the message across from the company to the developer, but it's equally as important, if not more, the other way around. So if you have, for example, a, uh, a platform and there it has an, uh, an API that is open for developers to, to play with, right? And there is a, an issue with it or there's some developer that says, oh, how, how about we we would add this feature or something like it would be really cool to have it. It's super important to also go that direction from the developer to the company, like that you have someone that is really in the middle of all the developers, mm -hmm. like really talking with them as a developer, you should be a developer as DevRel because you, you're going to talk with developers about coding stuff and then talking with them, just, just actually just talking about them, uh, with them about cool stuff, right? And this stuff comes up. It's like, oh, I used your platform. I saw a small issue there. I mean, it's not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. And then you are like, you write it down mentally. And the next thing you do is you take it to your team. You you, you raise this issue like, hey, there are developers talking about our platform and there are stuff we can do better, right? And it's also, um, so yeah, that's basically what it is. Com basically just communication in a very... Um, how do you say that? A merged way. So you are very, the person that is doing this communication is a part of the community. I th that, mm -hmm. that should be the best way to put it. So in this way, they are like very naturally connected to developers. They have a very easy way to bring their messaging to devel developers and most importantly, bring like feedback to the platform, e explain also developers how it works, what it is used for being very like, casual about it and non non salesy not in a non marketing way so yeah that's in a nutshell for me devrel which then goes into a little bit of different roles like one if like it's like like that would be the umbrella term like devrel developer relations for me that's like the big term for a little bit of different things which um include like developer advocate, which is like really they would go to the communities and like sort of advocate. It's like, oh, I see you're trying to do this. Why don't you try our platform? Or why don't you try this platform? I made a demo with this, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, then you also have technical uh, writers, which I think is another role as or another task, at least of DevRel, where you would just write content uh, technical content that is to explain how it works and that sort of stuff make demos make tutorials to make the the entry barrier as low as possible so if there's like some developer that wants to get started with your application or your platform you just give them the tutorial and you're like look this is this is like something we came up with if you have some more questions so it should be super super easy to get started right uh, one other would probably be uh, developer experience, which is more towards really um, how it is to use the product in general. Like mm -hmm. it should be the, it should just be one command and you're basically already set up and then you do two or three configurations max and then you're like all set and you can play around, right? Like really ha do have the experience of the developer like, 
be as painless as possible, especially if it if it's like a complex thing, it should still be like very very easy to follow. But then there's also uh, DevRel, for example, what I do, it's not, I wouldn't say it's traditional DevRel because I'm very involved in this conference that we are organizing every year. So this is not our core, but it's our, like what people know us for, right? Like uh, we are mm -hmm. developers is a recruitment platform, but we have this huge flagship uh, conference every year with 10,000 developers and uh, like, over 300 speakers and so on. So now I'm here um, uh, like working to make this the best conference that I can, which means I, I do a whole different lot of things. One, but most of them are like related to, again, to developers. So I, I talk with developers that I think would be great speakers. I invite them. I help people that are like, oh, hey, um, can, can, can you help me also maybe, can you help me with the CFP? Can you help me rate my CFP? Can you help me make it better? I had people uh, write me with that, but also um, uh, rating the, the CFPs, which is like probably the biggest, the most difficult task I had to do in this role, which is I get 1200 <laughs> CFPs, 1200 submissions for excited speakers that want to talk. And I can only accept like 300 of them or less. So mm -hmm. the issue is there, like you have like, not all of them are great, but most of them are like good. Then there are some that are great. And when you have the ones that are like great, where you say all of this would work, you still have way too many. So you have to decide because between like a great talk and another great talk, which is like sometimes heartbreaking because you're like, I, I want both of these speakers with both of these <laughs> topics, but it's just so limited, right? So that's like, I, I think I'm babbling on a little bit too much. Like, <laughs> no, because uh, this is kind of a thing about DevRel that, it, as, as you mentioned, this beautiful term of this umbrella and uh, how many terms are, uh, are under it. But um, at the beginning, you mentioned uh, one very, very interesting thing that I kind of experienced um, uh, in a way, how uh, I first get hi got hired uh, at uh, Body CI, which was a strictly technical company. I mean, mm -hmm. there were developers, developers, designers, one office mm -hmm. manager, and developers. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a strictly strictly technical team. So in this term, when I worked there with my DevRel role. I did not have to explain them how to translate something for developers. They mm -hmm. really did it. They, they, they exactly knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to speak to, let's call it normal people. <laughs> but with developers, they did not have a problem. And okay. right now, when I when I started working at, at, at Kinsta, I saw that one of my biggest roles isn't communicating with the outside but it's translating, it's helping marketing um, think as a developer. I am like this kind of developer guinea pig. They are constantly asking, so you as a developer, do you think that this message is correct? Yeah, and, 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 and very often uh, I'm, I'm trying to catch all those, all those phrases that I know uh, that would just irritate most of uh, most of developers. So yeah, and this is, and I think that one part that you uh, kind of uh, forgot, and I personally I think that it's also very important for when it comes to DevRel, are the one who are creating documentation. Oh yes, because yes. This is, That's... this is this is one of the most amazing passive DevRel there is. I mean, good documentation. Uh, can win like so many hearts of developers. Yeah, the, it's probably somewhere between the um, technical writing and the developer experience, right? But yeah, writing yeah. docs, it's definitely part of DevRel. And because you are you're reporting like probably the most substantial part to yeah, to to when there's like an API or something or a library to use of your platform, you want someone to that writes great docs because if not like doc, people talk a lot about docs. People are like, yeah, I wanted to try this platform and the docs were not great. And then I just didn't do anything anymore. But when you hear like, oh, I'm using this tool, usually it's followed by, 
oh, and the dogs are great. Like for example, Astro. Exactly. The dogs are just phenomenal with Astro. With oh. Vue.js, they are phenomenal. So it's yeah. something like really to that stands out. You, you're correct. I forgot that one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, while we are talking about the definition of DevRel, uh, let's go with a kind of a tricky question. Um, how did you explain what are you doing to your parents? Because I know that for me trying to explain what I'm currently doing to my parents and really my dad is a quite of a technical person. It was so complicated. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is really not easy, especially um, like before being DevRel at We Are Developers, I was DevRel for Vue Storefront where I had a, a much more... Um, traditional uh, DevRel role, which was really like make videos about the, the product and so on, write some like interact on Twitter. And that really was like, I tried to be like, okay, so I'm like the communicator between the developers and the company and they didn't get it. So I was like, okay, I make videos for that. And also that is like hard to understand. Whoa, what does it mean you make videos? And then I was just like, yeah, I, I I was just, yeah, I, I code like uh, demos and stuff. And that was sort of okay. And here in my new role, it's, I also just say I help organize the conference, which is uh, like technically true, but not really <laughs> what I do. <laughs> but it's easier to understand because if you come like, oh yeah, I record these videos. These are for developers because you can't do like really marketing to like, that means nothing to people. When you tell people that are not in this, that you do videos, it's like, what, what's, what's, her, how can I imagine this? And it's like pretty hard uh, explaining. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I said, in, in my, on my end, I was just explaining that it's kind of marketing, but not fully. And just don't ask me any further. <laughs> I'm happy where I work. That's it. Yeah. That's and then it's it. like, but but you're not a marketing. You didn't study marketing. So how do you do marketing if you don't know about marketing, right? Then people have that question. What's different, right, between a marketer and a, a DevRel? Yeah. And this kind of uh, goes to, an, to, to another question because, um, and this was kind of brought lately on Twitter, uh, that one of the most... Uh, distinctive things for DevRels when we compare them with typical developers is the fact that they can communicate with others because we know that developers are known for being introvert and there is this saying that that's I studied I something related to IT just to not have to talk <laughs> with others and DevRels are well developers who learned how to communicate with others do yeah. you think that's true? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, like you mentioned that this uh, this idea of developers that don't know how to communicate well enough, I think it's true, but there is a, a significant trend to more like that they, they do know. But yeah, as for the time being, it's still like a, a developer that really knows how to communicate like well, not only internally, but also really like do videos, talk in public. It's, yeah, as you said, it's generally or typically like traditionally a role that is very like a little bit more for introverted people because like you are like just at your computer, you do your stuff and you're not, not, not really like forced to interact with many people. Like you're not like some sort of project manager where you have to deal with a, a lot of people like you you are in your stand up meetings you you put maybe your opinion about the solution that you're implementing but that's about it and for some people this is like as far as it goes but yeah as you say when there's some, a developer that knows how to communicate extremely well i think that's very valuable for for a company to have and then also yeah, of I... course put them put them in a, a position where they can uh like if they want, of course, where they can um, use use that skill for for the benefit of the company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I won't lie. At some point, I felt that uh, I won't grow as a as a developer anymore because I felt that I kind of hit the wall 
And suddenly I learned that the fact that I can talk with others is a skill. <laughs> it's a skill yeah, and it's quite it, valuable. So I was yes, like, it, it is, mind it is blown. A, <laughs> yeah, it is a skill to not neglect because there's still like, even though the tendency is going a little mm -hmm. like better, but it's still like very prominent that developers are not amazing communicators in many of the cases. Yeah, and uh, now a bit, let's talk more about the business side of DevRel. Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, yeah, DevRel is kind of trendy. Everyone wants to have a mm -hmm. DevRel department. Uh, but let's be honest, when a company should hire DevRel, DevRels and when they shouldn't? Well, I think um, companies that are that need like insights from developers are well suited with a DevRel of some sort. It can have many different shapes, but it would be beneficial to have someone. Like I like there are very few cases where I would say you don't need one. Like if you're really just purely marketing something, like if you have a product that is not targeted at developers, mm -hmm. for example, but as, so, as soon, at least this is my opinion, right? As soon as you have something that is targeted at developers, you want a developer that is part of the community that can tell you what developers want, because you can do two things, right? You can do a whole marketing research, a survey, you can send it to your social media, you can boost that post with someone that is an expert on how to reach people on social media and so on. And then you evaluate those results and then you see what they want. Or you can have one person that is really good at communicating with developers. They relate with developers. They connect also on a human level. And then those developers will just tell them, will tell them, hey, yeah, I, I try to use your platform. There's like an, an issue there. Or it would be cool if this would be different. And then you are right at the source. So you are evading all of the marketing strategies to sort of find out what people want. You just They will just tell you. So I mm -hmm. think it's as long as you need to relate to a developer or to... to not even like sell. I, I hate that, like selling like to a developer, like because it's not what we do, because right? We 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 help the sales process in some way, but we are not selling it as DevRel, or at least that's not the idea. We should not be just selling stuff to developers, but like to like sort of enable developers to use the platform, show them how great it is, and help the co the company at the end like Im improve upon it, right? So mm -hmm. I think it's almost always beneficial having a DevRel if you have a product somehow targeting your uh, your targeting developers. Unless your team is already too small, then it, it might not be, it, it might just be overhead uh, at some mm -hmm. point. Like if you have like one developer, one marketing person and one DevRel, it's a little bit overshooting the whole thing. Like, but yeah. Yeah, and what uh, and what proportion do you think it's it's right? I mean, for example, how how many devrels do you have at uh, uh, We Are Developers? Well, we have now like people that fall in the devrel category, maybe like three or four. Mm -hmm. It because yeah, there are some that are not like technically in the devrel team, but they still mm -hmm. do devrel stuff like community management. They Mm -hmm. it's sort of they don't have like devrel title but it's for me it's part of devrel so i would say like three or four so not too much we can say i mean uh, not, not because, too, yeah not too I, many, I i, not I many, heard no. about uh, really quite small companies having devrel departments that have like 20 people so i was kind of shocked <laughs> Yeah, well, it probably depends on at which stage mm -hmm. you, the company is, right? If you have, like, if we, like, let's take the example I, I know of a little bit, Storyblock. I, I know they have an amazing developer team. I don't know how many devs they have, right? But I know they have an army of developer advocates and devrels. I was talking about them, I can tell you, because, yeah, uh, yeah at JS World, I learned that they have such a huge devrel team, and I was quite surprised. Yeah, I think, well, they got 
uh, in like a big chunk of investment, right? And they they want to like really push the growth. And there, I think it really makes sense to have a whole army of devrels like doing your communication for you, mm -hmm. because the product, it's it's not done because the product is never done, but the product is mature. So in that case, even having less developers than developer advocate in this case would make sense. So I think it really depends on on where your company is as well. But if you're just starting off, we have two developers and 10 devrels. I would say that doesn't make sense, but it always really depends on your strategy, on your marketing strategy as mm -hmm. well, on your growth strategy. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully understand. And um, where would you place Devrel more on the developer side or on, on the marketing side? Because I can tell you that officially I am a marketer and I still yeah. don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I have a, like a, f a few different uh, approaches to this. One that's very often made is we put DevRel into marketing. Then there's a little bit of a problem very often because it's not very well understood of everyone in marketing, what DevRel is. And they sort of try to like understand it, but they misuse it in some ways. And then they, like I, I had the experience in a previous company where marketing was a little bit too strong onto, okay, marketing, marketing. And I try mm -hmm. to convince them, no, like Dev DevRel, it works in a different way. We are not selling this in this traditional way. So this bridge of like um, like what DevRel is and what it should be uh, for, for marketing, um, it's natural because marketing is a very old profession. DevRel is very new. So if mm -hmm. you put it as part of marketing, like I can almost guarantee you there is going to be some friction unless it's very well communicated and the person that builds this DevRel team and they should be in very uh, good contact with marketing and really teach the company what is DevRel and why do we need it, right? So I have this other um, example of, of a company I know. I don't know if I can mention it um, I just won't. It's, I know they have um, marketing as part of DevRel, which is interesting. So it's a relatively young company, but they have, okay, this is DevRel. They do their DevRel stuff, DevRel stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then part of that, like a sub part of DevRel is marketing. So in this way, DevRel influences what marketing does, which is okay. interesting as well, because you do need... Uh, B2B marketing and it can't mm -hmm. be influenced too much by DevRel because the DevRel will be uh, focused on no, this like we shouldn't be selling this way or we shouldn't be marketing this way because this, it's too marketing, people don't want it but still B2B marketing needs to be done this way so that's also not a great solution so I think it needs to be in an, in an ideal world it's just separate at the same level like there is marketing mm -hmm. and there is DevRel and they should be heavily communicating with each other. They're both departments and like really look where is the, where's the separation here? How, where do we start DevRel and where do we stop uh, traditional marketing mm -hmm. and make sure that traditional marketing doesn't bleed over to developers too much mm -hmm. in, in a way yeah, that I um, like just, developer relations should like it's always you can always see as a developer oh yeah they have this b2b marketing as well but you almost never really pay attention to it you just pay attention mm -hmm. to it when you have a devrel talking with you which is exactly yeah. still it's still a very strange phenomenon that i haven't seen anywhere else so yeah but to be honest i can imagine many companies uh, especially those younger ones that are uh, mostly focused on um uh, yeah, on, on developers. Let's even look at uh, Vercel. Let's look at Netlify yeah, yeah. because they are mostly communicating with with developers by default, yeah. and from this, this is growing, uh, growing further. And and I could imagine. And uh, when you also mentioned this example of uh, of Devrel being inside of marketing, um, I must say that uh, I'm. I was really, really surprised by uh, how uh, 
how, how is this happening uh, at, at Kingston? Because we totally changed the way how we work. Because at first we were, because Kingston at, uh, is still kind of first WordPress hosting company. And uh, mm-hmm. this means that our target in this case, this target persona doesn't have to be a developer. It can be mm-hmm. just an owner because it's easy to uh, do something no code, low code on WordPress. On the other hand, when we started working on our application and database hosting, this is something totally, totally developer related. So yeah. the communication is totally different. And uh, the switch that was, uh, and it, it is, it is still difficult for marketing. And uh, yeah, we are kind of learning from each other because mm-hmm. I don't know a thing about marketing. I mean, or I already learned something because we are le- learning each other and they're also learning uh, from me how to communicate with developers. So I think that uh, when the time will pass, uh, it will get only better and better. But uh, I was really surprised that we haven't had this problem of what you mentioned, that the marketing will try to kind of eat the DevRel, uh, yeah. which would be it- possible. Yeah, it has to do a lot with, with the communication beforehand and how much the, the different teams understand. Um, mm-hmm. I think the main issue is when um, the, with the communication that goes outside. So w- when DevRel does communication, it's very like playful, very casual. And then a traditional marketer would be, oh my God, this looks so, so unserious. If we have business customers, this isn't a good look which they are right, but also the death road is right. So what's correct now? Yeah. So that's and like the issue where like there needs to be compromise and I can't tell you an optimal way to do it. I, I know at uh, View Storefront at the end, they decided to have one uh, B2B channel and one DevRel channel, two different Twitter accounts to do mm-hmm. two different ways of marketing. So this is a great solution in my, in my eyes. If yeah, you because... have the resources to do it, of course. Have, exactly. Because yeah, because it, it is true. I, I, I remember very often that I started some discussions with clients, uh, which started by sending each other uh, gifts over Twitter. And for some yeah. reason, it started uh, later on some business deal. I know yeah. it sounds silly. And I can imagine that many people from, from marketing would be just pulling out their hair, listening how you can communicate with our maybe future partner, by sending gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, should write I just did. To... I, I just did. <laughs> yeah, like, I hope this email finds you well. Blah, 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 blah. And then like this in it. It's like... Yeah, yeah. And, and and we just did a series of give exchange. And yeah, it worked. And it worked very often. So, uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is really, um, uh, really a thing. And um, uh, tell me... Uh, what do you think? Because uh, there is one more problem with DevRel, and mm-hmm. I can understand how, especially how marketing have can have problems with it. How to measure it? How to measure DevRel? That's a, a a big issue because there is no like, there's no real way to act to accurately measure it. I mean, you can measure the sales through a certain like link or whatever you can measure the followers on twitter which is not a real metric if you ask me Um, but still some companies use that to have some sort of grasp but uh, yeah as you say the issue is um, something you do as a devrel it's often just being present being nice being helpful but that that doesn't necessarily convert immediately to something like like you like what you do is you um you convince someone or you show someone that you as a, as a devil for this company, you are engaged, you try to help, and that sticks in the mind of people. So next time when they think about like something, for example, a friend comes to them, oh, hey, I'm looking for a new service that does this and that. And they're like, oh, I, I heard about this company, right? And then they check it out. They like it. Or they even refer, oh, yeah, I know someone that works there. They refer to the DevRel, and then you you have, like, a potential customer there. But it's, like, how do you want to measure this um, passive, like, effect, right? Like, because you just, you're just present in the mind of people. You can't really measure it in, a, in an accurate way because, 
Like also, for example, just speaking at a conference, I, I was at Code Europe with you. I gave a talk. Uh, it had nothing to do with my work, but it, I was still present in the community. They, uh, they, were, they were probably uh, helpful. I hope there were people that were like, oh, this is pretty cool. I will look up this guy and then like, what is this weird funnel person? They're like, oh, cool. Like they have a conference. Oh, I'm free that day. Bang, I buy a ticket and I indirectly made a sale without even talking about it. And I think that's like the general idea of it. But as you say, it's hard to measure. You can't really like marketing will have an issue with this because marketing measure everything. They measure every click, every visit, every everything. But this sort of, like subconscious, like talking with people, just being present, it's not really measurable. Like probably there are strategies to do it, but if you ask me, none of it is really accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I also totally agree with uh, with the power of uh, public speaking because yeah. uh, the effect that they can do, the fact that you can go on a stage and say your name and then say, I work at... In your case, we are developers. In my case, I would say yeah. I work at Kinsta. And somewhere I will say, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter or whatever. And yeah, and yeah it, it starts. Someone will, uh, in worst case, just start starts following you. And if they follow yeah. you, it's already kind of done because you are sending some messages over social yeah. media. And at some point it will be, oh, this is interesting. Let me check it out. And uh, yeah. And this kind of leads to, to another thing because, uh, yes, I mean, it was today because it was after midnight. Uh, I was recording a podcast with Jeremy Woods and we also are, were talking about DevRel and um, the, the fact that the most important thing that DevRel have is, is their trust. Mm -hmm. This is the most important uh, thing that we can build. And this is also uh, about the part about this DevRel versus DevCell, how yeah. we have to be careful because the fact that people trust us is our most important currency, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there I'm, I'm very much against the DevCell thing, um, at, at least for, for like, like DevRel because it really undermines the whole idea of DevRel because... Like, I mean, at least for me, it's like we are not in the business to sell something to someone that doesn't want it. We generally just want to show that we have something cool going on. In my case, we have this cool conference and I just want to make people aware of it. I don't want anyone to buy a ticket that they don't really want to go there. So, so this dev sell thing, they might have a place sort of but then it's again more marketing than anything else. And then I would like, I wouldn't even say dev sell. I would just say it's marketing and it's not really dev role because in my, in my eyes, it's like really selling onto people, almost being evangelists. Also evangelists, you would say it's dev rel, but depending how you do it, it's really more marketing than anything else. But that's mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I only once had 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 the chance to uh, listen to some presentation of Adobe uh, Evangelist, and they were talking about some technology that they already killed. So, okay. so yeah, he it it it, it, it wasn't the best uh, use of my time. And um, how to start your adventure as a devil? Because many people probably are uh, are listening because. From the outside, being a devil is cool, right? Because uh, it's not that heavy work. You can go from conference to conference. You can give all those talks, write an article from time to time. It can't get any better. So how to start? <laughs> yeah, so how to start is basically, or for most people that I met that are in DevRel, it's like not a coincidence, but sort of an, yeah, an accident. You just get there by someone uh, contacting you. So you, what the best way to do this, and this is actually something that someone told me before I was DevRel, I interviewed them about exactly the same thing. What is DevRel? And they told me this, that just be active in the community, just 
do stuff, be, be present, right? That's like the main thing. Be present, do whatever you want, like do a podcast, like you do, uh, for, write technical stuff, be uh, at conferences speaking because you stand out or, and you get noticed. People notice you, even though they don't write you. Oh yeah, I saw you talk. It was awesome, blah, blah, blah. More people than you, you know or more people than you realize notice you and they are like oh this guy is awesome and it would be so cool to have him on on our team and then eventually when they've seen enough of you they are like oh like let's just write write them and maybe they want to join us that's exactly what happened to me how i got into devrel which is i was like working as a developer i did like some like i, I call it yeah podcast like video like interviews and stuff and video like panel discussions and then out of the blue, the CTO at that time of um, of your storefront contacted me. Oh yeah, hey, I, I love your work, this and that. Like, hey, I see you're going to London in October. By any chance, are you attending uh, VGS London? And I was like, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. I I'm part of the um, uh, how do you say of the program committee there. And he, he was like, oh, this is great. And we will meet because I have something I want to talk to you about. And then we get into talking. He presented like that they need a DevRel, like the first DevRel, in fact, at the moment. And presented their case. And we got into talking. And a few months later, I started working with them. So it in in most cases, it comes like naturally. But of course, you can also always apply. Like some people say you should never apply and they always should come to you, which like it's so saturated of talented people that you can't make people notice you just by being there. You can also mm -hmm. just apply and say like, hey, yeah, I would love to work with your company. Look, I have this podcast. I, I did this and this and this and that. I did this public speaking stuff. So, yeah. So and summarize just be be present in in whatever way you feel comfortable if you feel comfortable doing podcasts do podcasts if you want to do public speaking at conferences do that if you are more comfortable writing docs or technical articles or stuff do that you don't have to be on camera it's always a little bit more favorable if you are on camera or you have like some sound bites where you are interviewing people it's always a little bit Better, but sometimes it's not even needed for the role. So just having like articles as well is is a is a strong start. Just be consistent and just be present, help others, and that can, yeah, then you you're already good. Yeah, I can tell that uh, my adventure started in a similar way. It was this accident. I was yeah. just I was just talking about Bali quite often, and at some point, hey, you like <laughs> to work for us, and I was like, I don't know, I don't. Because it, I would have to speak with people, right? <laughs> yeah. But in the end, yeah, it turned out that this is one of my talents, and uh, yeah, and this is this also I think if someone wants to become a DevRel, what talents should that person have? Because uh, yeah, being a DevRel requires some uh, some specific skills. Yes, so I would say the most obvious is that you need to be a good communicator. So you need to be really able to express yourself. You need to be able to, like, if you do something like, a, like where you also have to be on videos and that sort of stuff, really be, like, not afraid of, like, recording videos, pop, take, talking in public. But, yeah, you should... Um, you should be able to communicate well, but you should also have a strong technical uh, background. Not as strong as like senior developer, but you should always have enough knowledge to be able to talk with people about stuff, whatever whatever it's they are doing. So you have to stay uh, up to date with whatever technology it is you are surrounded with. Like for example, for me, it's a little bit more front end. Um, mm -hmm or it was when I was at Vistof, more front-end stuff and like that sort of things. But if, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you want to become DevRel for like, let's say a gaming company, you should be up to date with all the newest engines and all, everything. So always just be up to date with that. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be good enough to code like an app from one second to the other, like not that deep, but you should be great at communicating. You should be like, that's basically it. Like, be great at communicating and, and know 
enough that you can discuss, that you get into discussions. There's probably more, which now from the top of my head, I can't think, think about, but maybe those two things are the most predominant. Yeah, I, I also agree that those look like the most important ones because um, while I know that there are some people uh, who say that um, Dev <clears throat> DevRels don't have to have this uh, strong technical background, I kind of don't agree with this because, yes. uh, I mean, apart maybe from those roles that are more uh, about the community building and everything. Uh, in those cases, maybe this technical knowledge but, isn't that required. Yeah, but, but still, you, you it, always still, should have still. some sort of notion of what's going on, right? And you have to be able to to level with someone that talks about something a little bit more advanced. You don't need yeah. to understand all the details, but you have should have a strong understanding of it mm -hmm. and yes i would say technical knowledge maybe not like super strong it doesn't have to be extremely strong but you should have a good technical knowledge i would say mm -hmm. as well. like having zero technical knowledge could get you a job as devrel but i think you wouldn't be very effective one in my i think that uh, going back to one of the first thing uh, that you mentioned uh, that developers would quickly go through this uh, kind of layer of bullshit just like this yeah. because uh really developers are, are really horrible when it com comes to this really, yeah they developers are the worst <laughs> they are the worst really i i really including can't myself imagine right how how i worked as a developer for so long but yeah really we uh we, we are super are so critical detailed. about everything yes. and we, we question everything. I think it's in the nature of like what we do as developers. We question everything because maybe this is the bug. Maybe this is the bug. And then you sort of translate that like um, always questioning everything that have it into everything. So, okay, so they want to sell me this platform. How long okay. are they on the market? Which technologies are even used behind the scenes? How, is it, how do the docs look like? Will I have issues finding like someone that helps me with this? And then very quickly, you're like, okay, so they don't know what they're talking about. Next. It's very mm -hmm. like developers, including myself, are very harsh with like anything. So it's difficult yeah. to sell to developers. That's why we need DevRels, right? Because it's, it's very hard to sell bullshit onto developers. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. And uh, and what can I tell? Uh, when it comes to critical developers, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from Poland and Polish people are critical out of their <laughs> nature. So Polish developer, it's like horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, we really... A lot, a lot about uh, about Devrel, and uh, we really touch on the most uh, important things. And uh, tell me, uh, is there a thing in Devrel that annoys you, or you would like to change it? But Devrel itself, it's probably always the, the things that I stumbled upon is where marketing or in general the company doesn't understand what devil is supposed to be so then there it's where it's get frustrated so you know how you would communicate this and then people tell you no this is not um professional enough and then you are sort of not like yeah you sort of feel like you you're not heard right so i think like this bridge between marketing and devil which not always but often is an issue I think that's something that I, I I wouldn't say like to change it because how would you change it, right? But to sort of that that would be like a pain point. That and that very often, also not always, devrels don't get to code or not to code as much as mm -hmm. like developers. So like it's basically like a lot of communication and often not a lot of coding or even in my case no coding at all which is a little bit of a bummer because i love coding <laughs> <laughs> I, I i'm the lucky one that i at least can create a demo or two yeah okay time, that's so. <laughs> that's good and <laughs> yeah and, and this is the cool part of being a devrel that i can go from one technology to another and uh, and just check it out i don't have to deep dive into into everything <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so, um, so so I think that we really covered uh, covered a lot of it. Uh, Mark, I really want to thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for, for for sharing everything. Uh, yeah, I think that you really made uh, a lot of interesting points, and I really think that I will have to share this video uh, with, uh, with 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 my marketing. Uh, too, because uh, you really covered uh, a, a, a lot of those questions that uh, that very often marketing has about uh, what's the difference. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 really it's it's really important to to know the difference, to know how to coexist, yeah. and what mistakes not to do, because it's also something. Uh, yeah. yeah, that we should just avoid. So, yeah. Mark, uh, thank you, thank you so yeah. much for uh, for for being here, and uh, I hope that uh, well, you have a great uh, great rest of your day, and uh, probably one or two coffees more, right? Before for your sleep, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, thanks a ton, Marcek, for having me. It's been like fantastic being here, and yeah, thanks everyone for watching. It's been uh, like if if you like this, just if and you have more, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot about this. If you have more questions, hit me up. Can we like in the description later put some sort of uh, the link to my socials? If you have any, more oh, questions. it is it, it 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 is already there. But I will I will add oh, okay, them on perfect. Twitter okay, then if you have any more questions, points. just uh, send me. Uh, uh, mostly on Twitter, I'm active. So there, if you send me there, I'm most likely to respond. So uh, if you have any more questions, hit me up. And yeah, thanks again, Marcek, and have an amazing Thanks. day. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.